This is The Top, where I interview entrepreneurs who are number one or number two in their industry in terms of revenue or customer base. You'll learn how much revenue they're making, what their marketing funnel looks like, and how many customers they have. I'm now at $20,000 per top. Five and six million. He is hell-bent on global domination. We just broke our 100,000 unit soul mark. And I'm your host, Nathan Latka. Hello, everyone. This is episode 705. Coming up tomorrow morning, I talked to Benet. He's a 31-year-old who has raised $1.3 million to help you be more efficient. The question is, can you guess what he's helping you be more efficient with? You'll have to tune in to find out. Hello, everyone. My guest today is Scott Clark. He's the co-founder and CEO of SigOpt, a Y Combinator and uh, and uh, Andreessen Horwitz-backed op- optimization as a service startup. Scott has been applying optimal learning technologies in industry and academia for years. He holds a PhD in applied mathematics and an MS in computer science from Cornell University and a BS degree in mathematics, physics, and computational physics from Oregon State University. He was chosen as one of Forbes 30 under 30 in 2016. Scott, are you ready to take us to the top? Of course. All right, man. Bring it home for us. So tell us first, what does the company do and how? what's your revenue model? How do you make money? Yeah, so we're optimization as a service. We help companies building different complex AI and machine learning uh, pipelines get the most out of them by fine tuning all the different knobs and levers that sometimes block people from getting peak performance. Um, we're a software as a service company. People pay for a subscription to our API um, based off of the number of models that they tune each week. Okay, and, and give us a general sense of kind of size there. What's the average customer paying you per month? Are we talking five bucks or 10,000 bucks? Yeah, great question. So um, our work group pricing that we publish on our uh, website starts at $2,500 a month, um, getting you a little more than a dozen models a month. Um, enterprise plans ramp up from there um, around the $10,000 a month uh, mark um, is typical. And so what would you say the average is? The four or five grand? Uh, yeah, somewhere in there. So the, the 10 K a month is the, the enterprise license is where they start. Um, so that's what we target, um, mostly doing top down enterprise sales, but we have the other tier available for smaller startups kind of ramping into it. When you say you're typically doing top down enterprise sales, what do you mean by that? Yeah. So we usually engage, um, at the executive level, people who are really excited about using artificial intelligence or some of these more advanced machine learning techniques to transform their business. But often what they find is um, there's not a ton of experience uh, in this field just in general. It's become rapidly popular. And so they're not able to necessarily hire large swaths of people with decades of experience tuning and tweaking and building these models. So SIGOPT is a way to kind of make that system move faster, help them get more out of their models. um, And... uh, we go from there to the actual practitioners where we can bolt onto their systems and kind of amplify it. But, uh, yeah. Prudential, MIT, Hotwire. These are some of the guys you've won over. Tell us specifically how Prudential is using you. Or if you can't use them for confidentiality reasons, tell us about one of the other ones. Yeah, so um, Prudential is uh, really investing in machine learning and data science. Um, I think we see this across the board in a variety of different insurance uh, companies where uh, some of the more traditional models are being uh augmented by the amount of new data that's being able to be collected. Things are getting more sophisticated. Uh, People are leveraging some of these newer techniques um, to kind of transform the industry. As a part of that, um, as the data gets bigger and bigger, as people start to look towards these more sophisticated things like deep learning and artificial intelligence, the need for efficiency and the need for kind of the best possible performance um, only increases. And that's where SIGOPT is able to bolt onto these strategies that they're developing and make them better and better. Give me a specific though example. So Prudential is obviously in the insurance business. What data set have they given you and said, hey, throw your guns at this and try and figure something out for us? Yeah, that's a good question. So for confidentiality reasons, I can't go into too much detail there. Um, One way that we differ though, in terms of some more traditional machine learning as a service companies, where they take a data set and then we throw a bunch of magic at it and then produce some model. The way that SIGOP works is we'll go into a company that already has something in place. So we work with different uh, credit card companies. On is there one you can talk about? Yeah, so I can give you a specific example in okay. the credit card space. So um, fraud detection. Okay. So this is a problem that's been around for decades, um, something that credit card companies have struggled with for a long time. Um, they have models in place to help solve this. So you get a call from 
somebody and they say, hey, was this you? Um, is this a real charge? Something like that. There's a machine learning model behind the scenes deciding whether or not to do that. Um, obviously, they want to minimize fraud, but they also want to minimize how often they bug their customers with these false positives as well if it wasn't actually fraud. So there's a model in place. But even with a lot of domain expertise poured into that and decades of uh, time and energy, um, it's not perfect. These companies still lose millions of dollars of fraud every year. Um, so what SIGOPT is able to do is provide this optimization service that bolts on top of these models, basically fine-tuning all the different knobs and levers, the configuration parameters that make these machine learning models actually work in order to get boosted performance. So instead of just taking a raw data set of decades of fraud data and giving them some model to like rip and replace what they already have, we sit on top of what they have and provide this additive boost by fine tuning it. So you can think of it like a pit crew for a car or something like yeah. that. Yeah. So for like a pit, that's a great analogy. For a pit crew for a car, you have to understand kind of the knobs of different industries. In other words, I, I'm be, I mean, I'd be shocked if you had kind of one system you applied across all industries. And if that's not the case, you're spending a lot of time on professional services or custom engineering work per new industry client you sign up. Which one is true? So yeah, great question. So the uh, area that we focus on is what's called as black box optimization, which is designed to be this general purpose optimization framework where you only look at the inputs and the outputs of a system. And the interior is this black box that you don't introspect. So it turns out the way that people typically tune these systems are things like brute force, random configuration search, um, manual tuning. Um, turns out humans are pretty bad at doing 10 dimensional optimization in their head. Um, so what we're able to do is, without any domain expertise, without making any assumptions about that underlying model, outperform these standard techniques by providing this ensemble of black box Bayesian optimization strategies behind an API. And that's where our domain expertise is. Got it. Yeah, one of the things I always struggle with when someone comes on and mentions a buzzword, right, like a like artificial intelligence or machine learning is like, it's my job to like figure out what's bullshit and like where there's actually yeah. new technology. Because a lot of people will be like, this is machine learning, but it's like not really machine learning. So, yeah. I mean, are you, you know, I'm giving you out, you know, thou, the fraud detection, the st there's a system, I'm giving you literally millions of pieces of output data. Are you, you're putting this output data in your kind of black box solution, right? That kind of works anywhere. How do you know though, what trends to look for to increase performance for a specific industry? Yeah, great question. So once again, how we differ from maybe a traditional machine learning as a service company is instead of taking those millions of outputs of just the raw data, of which fraud, what's not, what we're doing is we're relying on the domain expertise of the person at that firm to build up, let's say, a, a deep learning model. It's okay. going to the thousands of data points and like actually go through and decide um, how to classify fraud or not. That being said, that expert is left with this arduous task of how do I define this model? What's the architecture of my neural network? What's the learning rate? What are all these kind of high level configuration parameters that I have to set in order for this model to be functional at all? And typically this is an extremely trial and error based process where the expert could know everything in the world about fraud, everything about the context of how they want to apply it within their platform, but then they just need to sit there and try, should it be 10 hidden layers, should it be 12, 13? Very trial and error, not a lot of intuition there. So what we do is apply this ensemble of Bayesian and global optimization techniques to the problem so that we can efficiently configure this system. They can focus on their domain expertise. The outputs that we see is just, we gave you a configuration to try, how well did it perform? So not the underlying data, not the model, but just these higher level configuration parameters. So if, if we think about the data person inside of Prudential as the guy that's building a water slide, and you're the person that's giving them five curved pieces, three pieces that are 10 feet long, and he then has to use the domain expert, she has to use the domain expertise to kind of build the slide. The water comes in, the water goes out, but they're using that domain expertise to build the important parts of their business. Is I mean, is that an appropriate analogy? Yeah, so in this case, it might be things where we would like suggest different curvatures, and then they would build that up and be able to see, well, how fun was the ride? We're going to do user surveys or something like that. Given that Got information, it. we're going to suggest different curvatures, different lengths, et cetera. But instead of doing that by kind of brute force, trying all different options, or manually trying to tweak this high dimensional space, we're providing the, this best in class optimizer in order to do it. So you only have to build 
10 slides instead of 10 million in order to get to the best one. So let me ask you another, well, first off, I, I want to keep, I'm getting down here what, what I'm curious about, which might not be what my audience is curious about. So let me just hook them real quick. Have you raised capital? If so, how much? We have um, about $8.8 million to date, went through Y Combinator in winter 15. Uh, Andreessen Horowitz led our seed round immediately following that. They also led our Series A last July. Great. So we'll talk more about that in a second. I want to go back, though, to the domain stuff. Prudential uses you. You help them discover something that significantly increases their bottom line. How do they make sure and how do you make sure that secret sauce now isn't passed on to Geico and, and Aflac and everyone else in the industry? Yeah, and that's kind of the joy of this black box optimization approach. Because we never see their underlying data, because the model itself it stays proprietary and within their systems, all we're doing is fine-tuning these different configuration parameters. Whatever domain expertise they apply to differentiate themselves from their competitors remains within their system. Come on, Scott. Look at me. You really, there's, you've figured out a way to really dissociate yourself with whatever learning they pick up so that there's not even a chance of you accidentally disseminating that information to a competitor. So as we get more and more customers, we can use that information to make our black box optimization framework better and better. Um, that being said, uh, the, the entire system is designed to be very hands off. This allows us to work with some of the most secretive algorithmic trading firms in the world where their domain expertise and their models are literally how they make their billions of dollars, but they can still use SIGOPS because all we're tuning are these configuration parameters, these thresholds, these slow and fast moving window sizes, et cetera. But at the end of the day, their data and their IP never touches SIGOPS. Got it. You've raised 8.8 .8 million bucks. You went through YC, Andreessen Horowitz led you around after that. What year did you launch the company in? Uh, at the end of 2014. Okay, 2014. And then bring us forward to today. How many customers do you have paying you? Uh, about a dozen customers around the world. Got it. This, okay, so this is very much an enterprise sale then. Exactly. So Got it's it. enterprise sales, software as a service. Um, working with different Fortune 500 and Global 2000 companies. You mentioned Prudential and Hotwire. Huawei is another customer. Um, we have a handful that we can't talk about, but major credit card companies, algorithmic trading firms, banks, et cetera. And Scott, I mean, uh, can I take the 12 customers and multiply times, again, that average monthly price of around four grand, assuming you guys are doing, what, somewhere around 50 grand per month right now? Uh, that's a fair assumption, yeah. Okay. Are you making folks sign annual deals or can they pay monthly? Uh, we offer both, but uh, we definitely prefer the annual deals and try to incentivize that. What, what do you do, a 10% discount or something? Uh, yeah. Exactly that? Uh, yeah, okay. almost exactly that. Okay, awesome. <laughs> every and, deal is slightly different. That's the joy of the enterprise. Yeah, I know, 100%. That's the joy of being a startup. You can change every deal and then figure out what you want to put up on your website, right? All exactly. right. Okay, cool. So, so that's helpful to understand. Um, how are you, has anyone started paying you and then stopped? Any churn yet? Uh, no, that's the nice thing is once customers start putting this into their system to replace it, they have to go back to one of these previous techniques, like trying to brute force the problem or something like that. And, um, not only can we do things faster and cheaper, but, uh, we also get better results at the end of the day. So, um, it tends to be fairly sticky like that. And what's your team size to date? 13 people. All in San Francisco? Uh, we have one remote uh, person in Spain. Um, one of the nice things about this is we're able to bring together a lot of the world's experts in this. So this is someone who's a professor and has 10 years of experience in this field. Um, but uh, everybody else is in San Francisco. And why did you raise the money? Where are you spending most of it? Uh, so building the team, um, that was really important to us. Uh, also, um, the enterprise sales effort um, is time consuming and expensive in itself. So we wanted to make sure that we could fully invest in that and give this the best shot we possibly could. Of the 13, how many folks are sales related, whether it's account managers or inside sales reps or SDRs? Uh, about a third, uh, if you include myself. Okay, but uh, three or four. And, yeah. then, and then what are you, you're probably still trying to figure this out, but what's your gut tell you right now that you're spending to acquire one new customer? Oh, that's a great question. Um, hard to tell because we have so many different things in flight right now and the pipeline is kind of very dynamic. Um, but we have three or four salespeople trying to close deals. So, yeah. um, are they flying so, or you have to make in-person sales typically or no? Uh, so we do visit our customers. I was out in New York the week before that Houston, the week before that. Um, so we, we do some of that, um, as part of kind of enterprise sales necessitates it. Yeah. But uh, the joy is once we get people up and running, um, the software as a service kind of takes over and it's a very plug and play, um, and easy to use.
Yep. That's great. Now, do you, I mean, when you raised and Andreessen led, I mean, did they ask you questions about, you know, LTV, you know, lifetime value of a customer relative to what you're paying to acquire them and how you're going to manage that cash gap? So one of the things that they uh, really like to do is make these big bets on these new technologies that are highly differentiated from what people do today. So I think a lot of what they've been able to do is at the seed round, it was very speculative, a lot of investing in just kind of the, the idea and the, the uh, founding team. Um, by seeing how we performed over the year and a half or so before they then led the Series A and by seeing how customers were responding to us and being able to back channel, they were able to see that this is definitely a large market that uh, we're well poised to be to capture. Um, so I think a lot of it still is being really excited about a new kind of transformative idea. And uh, the goal with the Series A money is to make this repeatable business process out of it. Is that a sexy way of saying they didn't give a shit about LTV to CAC ratio? They just want to be in an exciting space and be in the hype? Um, I mean, they do incredible due diligence. <laughs> so um, they definitely care about everything. Um, and they're the smartest people uh, that we've ever been able, had the fortune to work with. But that is um, the right, that is the right answer. <laughs> <laughs> you, you must be trying to get that series B lead right now. That's what's happening. I can feel it. <laughs> we're not actively raising money right now. That was no. the nice thing about the A's. It gave us a nice cushion and we're building a very sustainable business. With when, it. when was that? That was in July last year. Okay, got it. So yeah, about a, about a year, year and a half in. And most of your, I mean, I'm just doing back of the napkin math here with a team of 13. Again, if you're paying in San Fran a conservative salary, of call it eight grand per month, right? That comes out to about a hundred grand per year and then add on, you know, 20% on top of that. So about 10 grand per month across 13 folks, you know, your call it headcount is 130, something like that. That's the majority of your expenses, right? Each month. Headcount definitely is a majority yeah. of it. Yeah. Many of you know I am buying companies that I really, really like, and there's no quicker way for me to get to the bottom of what is happening on that website than using this tool called NathanLaka.com forward slash hot jar, H-O-T-J-A-R. It basically will give me a recording, okay? When anybody lands on the website, it'll give me a recording of where the viewer is scrolling, and obviously does the basic stuff like heat maps too, but I learn so much about where the users are scrolling and clicking on my site using that tool. It helps me increase conversion rates, make more money, and grow those businesses faster. And we'll have to see what happens with those businesses, but I'm buying them. I'm buying them very quick, and I'm using NathanLaka.com forward slash Hotjar for all of my website analytics. You can too. I work with them. It's totally free. You can go to NathanLaka.com forward slash Hotjar. No credit card required. Again, use it as much as you want. NathanLaka.com forward slash Hotjar. I'll see you there. Awesome, man. Let's wrap up here with the famous five. Number one, what's your favorite business book? I really like The Hard Thing About Hard Things by uh, Ben Horowitz. I read it before we started working with him, and uh, I've reread it since, and it's, there's a lot of good insights there. Number two, is there a CEO you're following or studying? Uh, one nice thing about A16Z is that they're all CEO operators of the, all the general partners are, so I learn a ton from them. I also recently read uh, Shoe Dog by Phil Knight and found that really insightful. The, his resilience is uh, motivating. Number three, is there a favorite online tool you have, like Acuity Scheduling? Um, I mean, I use Gmail every minute of every day. Um, Reddit's probably my actual favorite website, though. <laughs> but we know, uh, tools wise, uh, Slack, probably. Number, uh, number four, how many hours of sleep do you get every night? I try to get eight. Sometimes it's hard with the jet lag and the travel, but uh, I think sustainability is an important part of doing this for the long run. And what's your current situation? Married, single, do you have kids? Married, uh, no kids. No kids. Okay, good. And how old are you? I'm 30 years old. All right. <laughs> we had to think about that one. <laughs> last, last question, Scott. Take us back 10 years. What do you wish your 20-year-old self knew? Um, that it doesn't get easier. So set up uh, habits and processes to make things uh, sustainable when you have the time and ability to do so, because that'll definitely help you once uh, things continue to kind of ramp up. There you guys have it from Scott, founder of Sig Opt back in 2014. He's since gone through Y Combinator, had Andreessen Horowitz lead his first round, 8.8 .8 million raised, team of 13. Again, making it easier for these large companies with big data sets actually make sense of their data, right? Inputs, outputs, uh, counting up 12 clients right now, paying on average four grand per month for somewhere around 50 grand per month and monthly recurring revenue team, mainly based in SAM. Francisco Scott, thank you for taking us to the top. Thank you. 
If you enjoyed today's episode with Scott, go back and listen to Eric yesterday. He created his product because it was necessary to save his mom from dying. Literally, it's a brand new health tech product that recognizes seizures. It would mean the world to me if you guys got any value from this episode, if you would go leave a review on iTunes right now and then subscribe. You know, I hustle like heck to get these episodes out every freaking day for you guys. And trust me, I love it. I would do it with no listeners. But boy, oh boy, it makes my day and it makes my team's day when we see great reviews and get your feedback. So thanks so much. Okay, Top Tribe, I love giving away free money. I feel like Oprah giving away cars and I have something special for you today. How many of you have heard our super sharp guests talk about success they've had with Facebook and Google ads? Well, all of you listening right now, yes, if you're listening, you get $100 in free AdWords. Here's how you get it. Okay, Again, thanks for listening. Get the free $100 from Google right when you sign up with my website host provider, HostGator. Go sign up now to get your free money. HostGator.com forward slash Nathan. Again, that's HostGator.com forward slash Nathan.